Today we are going to learn about different current sources and their properties. So current source is basically a kind of uh, source that gives us basically current not voltage. For example, if you take a JFET MOSFET or even uh, the collector current of a transistor, they act as a current source and they are denoted like this. This arrow actually denotes the direction of current flow. So if it is pointing to upward, that's mean the current is flowing through this direction, from this direction to this direction. In ideal current source, the resistance of the current source which are actually connected in parallel is infinite. So uh, in case of infinite resistance, that's mean basically it is open circuited, right? So we can remove this resistance. So this is an ideal current source. There are basically a few properties of this ideal current source. First of all, obviously, the internal resistance of the ideal current source is infinite. And the second point is, you may draw any amount of voltage, but the current will remain constant. That means the output current is always constant with respect to voltage, right? So for example, suppose let us see this graph uh, where I can plot current and uh, here I can draw voltage. Now you may ask how I can draw different voltage from a current source. The answer is very simple. Let's put a load resistance here. This is the load resistance RL. So the output voltage that is VL should be equal to current into resistance simple ohms law now if i increase this load resistance then the voltage will also increase but at that time current should remain constant so i can draw as much voltage as i want but the output current of this current source should be constant that is the property of ideal current source but in real life the current will decrease so in practical current source, you can see there is a resistance in parallel with the ideal current supply. Okay. Now this resistance, internal resistance, ideally it is infinite, but in real life, in practical case, it is not infinite, but is very high. Normally the order of this internal resistance is of mega ohm order. Okay. Now let me put a external load resistance here rl so you can see this whole thing is basically now the current source right and this is the load resistance now what happens suppose the current source supplies i current to the circuit okay now some amount of this i current will pass through this internal resistance let us say it is a leakage current so maybe i would call it i dash and the other part will pass through this external load right so let's call us this load current il so il basically nothing but i minus i dash okay that is very simple to understand now you remember if there is two resistance in parallel combination suppose this is r1 and this is R2 and if the total current is I suppose I1 current passes through R1 and I2 current passes through R2 then they will again combine here I1 plus I2 and will become I now do you remember that the percentage or amount of current that will flow through this R1 resistance which is I1 what amount what part of the total current i will pass through r1 you can calculate this by your own i am just writing it here the i1 should be actually proportional to the opposite resistance suppose this resistance is very high then small current will pass through this resistance so maximum current will pass through this resistance so r2 divided by total resistance r1 plus r2 this fraction of total current will pass through r1 similarly i2 should be r1 divided by r1 plus r2 this fraction of 
total current will pass through R2. So this is your homework how to calculate this I1 and I2 is very basic simple concept of uh, 12 standard Ohm's law. Okay. Now let's see. So what is the value of IL which is passing through this load current? IL should be equal to internal resistance of the source divided by R plus RL into I. So this fraction of the total current will pass through the load resistance. Then you may ask what is the output voltage? Output voltage is simply load resistance into load current. So this is equal to R into RL divided by R1 plus R2 into I. Now if the load resistance RL increases, so does the output voltage VL. Right? And IL will decrease. If it was an ideal current source, that means if R was infinite, then the current IL should have been remained constant. Now let us see what the current versus voltage graph will look like for practical current source. Now you can see if I put the output current IL here and voltage, load voltage or even load resistance in X axis. So in case of ideal current source, the output current should have been remain constant. But now we can see that as we increase the load resistance, the output current will decrease. So this is the main difference between ideal and practical current source. Let us see this with an example. Suppose I have a one ampere current source. Okay and the internal resistance is simply 1 mega ohm and I put an external load resistance of 1 kilo ohm. So ideally the load current should have been 1 ampere but now let's see what happens. Now the load current is equal to as we remember this is RL and this is R. So the load current should be R divided by R plus RL, this fraction of the total current, right? If R was infinite, then infinite divided by infinite, that should be cancelled out and load current should have been equal to the supply current. But now, if I put the values here, 1 mega ohm divided by 1 mega ohm plus 1 kilo ohm into 1 ampere, then we can calculate this, this current becomes 0 0.999 ampere so this current is actually 0 0.1 ampere less so this is the amount of leakage current nearly 100 milliampere is the amount of leakage current that we are losing due to the internal resistance of the current source right so the basic difference between ideal and practical current source is now clear. In case of ideal current source, the internal resistance is infinite. So we don't draw this internal resistance at all. This is basically open circuit. But in case of practical current source, the internal resistance is of the order of mega ohm. For ideal current source, we can draw any amount of current without losing its value. But in practical current source, we cannot draw any amount of current keeping the current constant. So I is not constant. It always depends upon the load resistance and load voltage. It is a function of load resistance or we may say load voltage. In case of ideal current source, the output current that is the supply current by the uh, current source is not dependent on output voltage right that doesn't depend on the how many load you are putting or how much voltage you are drawing it always gives a fixed amount of current but in case of practical current source the output current always depends on these factors in our next video we will learn how to convert this practical current sources into practical voltage sources
or vice versa. You see, sometimes in our lab, we need some current sources, then we can make them by using voltage sources. So stay tuned for our next video and thank you for watching.